All right, so here's our next problem. Um, we've drawn out the, the curves in question, and, and from the picture we can see the region, right? So we have this parabola opening out that way from the root x plus 2. We have this parabola here coming down, right? And then we've got our line going across. This determines the region enclosed by the curves. Now, um, this point of intersection clearly is at 0, 2, right? There's, that's, that's kind of clear from the graph. There's two other points of intersection that we've got to nail down here, right? So this particular point of intersection here, well, that happens when, when these two curves cross, right? So if I set 2 equal to minus x minus 1 squared plus 3, well, let's move the, uh, the square over to that side, subtract 2 from both sides. We have 1, right? So x minus 1 is going to be plus or minus 1. So either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 2, right? Okay, so good, yeah. So that other point of intersection, of course, if we were drawing the rest of the parabola, it would come down um, like so. And then you might be concerned about this other region, but no, we are we care about this region here. So this is the point of intersection 2, 2. And then we have to get this point of intersection up here, which is when these two curves meet, right? Um, so we got to sort that one out. That one maybe takes a little bit more algebra, but it's doable. So we say, okay, let's, let's find where those intersect. So if we put root x plus 2 is equal to minus x minus 1 squared plus 3. All right. I mean, we can, I, we can guess, right? We can guess that it's between 0 and 2. My drawing is not perfect. It looks like it's closer to 2 than it is to 0. But notice that if... Uh, if x is equal to 1, just save ourselves some algebra, right? Um, root 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, and minus 0 squared plus 3 also equal to 3. So, so 1 works, right? 1 is the, the point that we want. Um, you could go ahead and solve. It's, it's a little bit inconvenient to solve this one just because you've got the square root and the square somewhat unpleasant. It's doable, but it's, it's not necessarily what we want to do. So this time we just eyeball it. We find, we find the answer. We get that it works. So this is at the point 1, 3. Okay, so far so good. Now, there, there are two ways that you can set up this problem depending on, you know, how much work you want to do and, and so on. One is to notice, well, okay, the way we've been setting things up, kind of this picture here, we actually have to sort of consider two separate regions, right? We have to do this region and then this region because, and let's label them, maybe one and two, right? Because region one, we have the integral from zero to one, upper minus lower, upper curve in this case is root x plus two minus the lower curve, which is just y equals 2, dx. Actually, that's not so bad, right? I mean, that's just root x. We can do that. Power rule, fine. Um, second one, area is the integral from 1 to 2. Now the upper curve is our parabola, so we have to do minus x minus 1 squared plus 3. Subtract 2. And again, that's not so bad. We can simplify, we can clean it up, and we, we get our answer. So that's one way you can do it. You can calculate those two integrals, get the values, add the two numbers, and you have the area, and, and it's done. But actually, there's, there's a more convenient way sometimes to set this up, which is rather than kind of thinking of your area as kind of these rectangles aligned this way, we could think about rectangles that are aligned this way, right? So we could, we could actually think about 
tracing the area out sort of like this. Okay. And orient things so that we're actually thinking now of, of y is the independent variable and x is the dependent variable, right? So we're just going to flip the picture, right? Just turn it, look at it from the other angle. Um, but of course, if we want to do that, well, then we have to get x as a function of y, right? So the other way you can do this is you integrate with respect to y, okay? So how does that look? Well, first of all, we say that if y is equal to root x plus 2, that implies that, well, we subtract 2, we'll have root x is y minus 2, we square both sides, x is going to be y minus 2 squared. If we have y is equal to minus x minus 1 squared plus 3, that means that x minus 1 squared is 3 minus y. And so we take the square root of both sides. x minus 1 is going to be plus or minus the square root of 3 minus y. Um, and so now we have to decide, okay, which, which of those two square roots are we going to do, right? So the, the positive square root, right, so here's x equals 1, right? Here's x equals 1. So x, 1, so we, you know, we add 1 to both sides, then 1 plus the square root, x is getting bigger, gives us this half. 1 minus the square root is this side. We want 1 plus the square root. We want this side here, right? So we want to use... x equals 1 plus the square root of 3 minus y, okay? And now if you kind of tilt your head sideways because you kind of want to think in terms of like upper minus lower, maybe now you're thinking right minus left, right? Because you want positive area. We want larger x values minus smaller x values. This should play the role of the upper curve. This plays the role of the lower curve. And so you can alternatively set things up like this. You can say, well, the area is going to be, so now my upper curve is going to be, it's this one here, which is 1 plus the square root of 3 minus y. And then you subtract off the lower curve, which is here. Okay. And now you're integrating with respect to y. And what are the limits of integration? Well, y starts at 2, goes up to, we have it here, it's 3, right? So y goes from 2 to 3. And again, you can, you can evaluate that integral. It's, it's going to be kind of simple substitution to deal with both this and this, right? Relatively straightforward, substitution plus power rule. Um, if you want to see the computational steps, again, you can Check the full solution in the textbook for those details. Important thing is knowing the setup. So you have two options for this one. And you kind of, you have to, as you're doing these problems, it's a judgment call that you make as to which one you think is going to be less work. In this case here, I mean, yeah, you had to do two integrals to do it with respect to x, but neither one is actually all that difficult. And you avoid having to do the extra algebra of solving for x as a function of y. So maybe you were happy doing it this way. But if you did want to be able to express the area as a single integral, perhaps you prefer to do it that way.